Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Um, I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit different for my channel uh, than I previously do. Um, I actually invested in a piece of equipment for my business and I wanted to show you guys the unboxing of it, um, how I set it up. There's not a lot of really good videos of the unboxing process and a lot of information about this piece of equipment. It is an embroidery machine. It is a bigger embroidery machine than I've had in the past. Um, and I am going to be using it for my business to embroider stuff, especially for other small businesses. So I wanted to show you that. So you'll see a little bit of that. The reason this is not a unboxing video, um, like in the normal sense, is because we couldn't literally fit it in the box in the car. So we did have to take it out of the box to transport it. I don't have a big enough car to allow the box to stand up straight for us getting it from the store to the house. So that is why it is not technically an unboxing video because you don't really see the boxes. Um, but I don't do anything other than take it out of the box before I show you how I'm going to be using it. This is going to start more videos of like any questions you might have of how to embroider stuff, what embroidering stuff with a 10 needle machine can be like, how I embroider hats and all the things that I'm about to embroider, um, as well as I can show you how I embroider stuff on my smaller embroidery machine that you might have at home. So it's another form of making. It's a lot more textile. It's a lot more fabric. But I am a well-rounded, well, I try to be a well-rounded maker and a well-rounded artist. And I think that fiber is just another form of art. So stay tuned. Um, this will be more videos for me to make, more videos for me to show, more information to give you, but also so that you can see kind of what I'm doing when I'm not making D&D stuff, when I'm not doing certain things. But I will say that now that I have the ability to embroider pretty much anything, I'm definitely going to have to embroider some D&D stuff. So without further ado, you can see my videos and, uh, and you can see the unboxing process and I hope you enjoy. It's out of the box. We now have it set up. I did the film around so you can see the film around of what it looks like when you take it out of the box. But we did put it on the stand that we bought for it because let's be honest, I didn't have a table. And this one, it locks in, which is pretty great. So if you wanna see the locks, these are the locks that go around the wheel, which are super useful for, you know, reasons like what if something happens? Um, what comes with it is an owner's manual, like everything. Every brother machine that you ever get is a huge owner's manual. Um, but the part that we're going to be talking about today is getting ready, right? Setting up the machine. Um, we got this machine today. It is late o'clock and we want to make sure that it actually works before we go to bed, before we have to call somebody tomorrow to fix it. Okay. So first step is loosening these two. There's two thumb screws right here, right here. With this tool that actually comes in your packet of tools, we'll talk about the packet of tool, and sweeping this panel out and in place where you want it. Um, and either locking it in place or doing whatever you want. What's really great about this panel being here is that it does have the ability to tilt um, depending on your vertical height, how you like to see your machine, whether or not you want to see it from sitting down. So that's pretty awesome uh, that you can kind of just flip it back and forth wherever you want it to be. And, you know, that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to take off this tape. This tape does remind you that you need to remove these fixing plates before switching on the machine, which are these bright red ones. If you I was told by the dealer that if you do not remove them, you will severely mess up your machine, requiring it to have to like go back. Like you basically ruin your machine. So please don't do that. Please remove them by all costs. You just spent all the money on this 
fix it. I'm gonna remove these two pieces right here. They are called um, fixing plates. They just ensure that this stays in place for travel. So I'm just gonna use this handy dandy screwdriver that they put in the box of tools that goes with this sewing machine. And I'm gonna actually put these fixing plates in uh, that tool box to save them. Um, some people won't need them uh, because you will, you know, not have to move as often as I do, but. All right, and there's two. So this is the first one. And this is the second one. So next, where do your threads go and how to set that up? So all you're gonna wanna do is just lift straight up you're good to go and then tighten these two thumb assemblies right here and you're ready to go. I will take this box that's just hanging there um, <laughs> off right now. For this one, <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right, don't forget your tool when you're doing this. This this assembly actually sets out so the threads can go up and through your thread assembly. Um, so I'm gonna do that right now. So loosen that and then pop it out and you're good to go. This will ensure that you can see all your colors through your machine as you're working. Hopefully it'll help me know when I'm running out before I'm running out, so. So the next step is to put in that embroidery frame holder that is actually going to be holding your frames as you embroider. So I'm gonna take off this tape right here, as well as there's another tape on the other side that matches it, creating an X, and remove this piece of cardboard right there. So that piece is removed and there's this styrofoam that is sitting right here that I remove. Um, it is the piece that is going around your needles. I really wanna keep this, especially for travel. All right, and now that that is complete, I'm going to be inserting the embroidery frame A. The reason I'm using the A one and not the B one, it does come with a B uh, a one, is that all the embroidery frames that I will be using in the near future will be the embroidery frames that came with the machine. If you have any questions about what frame to use or if what holder to use with your frame, make sure that, to look in that manual because it does specify on page 66 and 67 and 68 what um, frame holder you need for the frame. So as you're inserting this, there are holes that you have to match up and it does come with these two thumb tacks, which I'm going to undo. Which I'm gonna undo. These will hold your embroidery frame holder in place. First things first, I'm gonna set this over here and place it on its hooks. And then I'm going to attach those. I'm just gonna double check. So you want these pegs to go in this second one right here. And then in the one, two, three, four from the right side. And then your actual screws that go in to hold it, go into this one. And 
and this hole. So they go in right next to it, to the left right there, and then three in from the right. And now you're ready to plug in your machine, turn it on, put a hoop in it, and try it out and thread it. All right, so the first chime turning this machine on it's going to be exciting. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> That's supposed to happen, I think. I hope. <gasps> please drop, uh, please put a drop of oil on too. So in the box of tools that they gave you, they did give you some oil for your machine. Every time your machine turns on, it will ask for a drop of oil. Um, you're supposed to do it. Um, if you need help knowing where to put the drop of oil in the bobbin cover at the bottom, it shows you exactly where to put that drop of oil. So if you're ever questioning, there's actually a picture literally right here that will show you exactly where to put it. All right, so after you have put your drop of oil on uh, in the machine, you're gonna go through the startup process. It does ask you language, it will tell you the machine will move. If you have other embroidery machines, they always, the carriage always auto sets itself up. So we're gonna hit okay. And, and it's gonna move. I think it's done. <laughs> and then we're gonna do the date, the time, um, and set that all up. The big thing that I will say is that if you want to see your clock and your time to remind yourself that you, you know, that it's super late in the, in the day or, you know, everything you've been working really late, um, you can click the clock display on once you set this up and it will show you down below what time it is. So, um, it's 2021. It's the 22nd. I should have gone the other way. And it is PM and wait, no, we're not going to do military time. Um, it is 8.55. See, I learned from the first one. Boom. All right. Hit okay. Now, if you do hit this clock down here, you can get back to this menu and hit on and then it'll tell you the date and time, which, you know, some of us want to see, some of us don't want to see. Um, now, this is the base view of this panel. Um, you do have all the appliques as well as buttonholes and a bunch of other quilting stuff, which I'll go into the specifics of. Um, what's really exciting is that you can connect this to your uh, local LAN or Wi-Fi, um, which is, and, you know, if it works, it's pretty awesome. So... That's it for right now for this unboxing. Tomorrow I'll come back and figure out the threading situation. Okay, threading the needle. So what I have done already is I have taken all my threads and brought them through the back metal. And now I'm going to put it through this and keep going down. I'll do one on camera so you can see how it goes. Um, there is a lever right here that opens and closes these. They do have to be open when you're loading them through. And then as soon as you're done loading them, you close it. Um, so we're going to leave that plate open right now. This machine very much feels like uh, any other serger. If you've ever threaded a serger uh, from the beginning, you know, you have to follow all the lines. Um, so I suggest if you're vertically and uh, vertically challenged like I am that you might want to get a step stool to make sure that you can follow all the lines. Um, the big thing as well as once these are all threaded, you can um, re-thread just like a serger. So you can tie off, you can cut and pull it through. You do want to um, let the automatic threader do the needle though. So that's the last, so that's a little bit different than an actual serger. So the first one I'm gonna do is number five, which is my white. I'm gonna take it from that back, slide it through, 
Number five. So let's, I'm going to show you a detailed video of kind of where five goes. So five, the thread goes up through those metal bars to this right here. Open that up, comes down, following the thread, goes around that plate right there, around the tension. Now it's gonna come down and around. So you can see that there's arrows right there coming down. Then it goes around and through that lever right there. So down and around. There is one last hole right there. And then through this top bar right there. And then using the automatic Needle threader, boom, done, did it. How cool is that? All right, so now that all my colors are set and if I go into my color picker. I've selected all the colors that match perfectly. I'm going to stitch out my first design on this machine. What I was told is that as soon as you set all your colors, it's a good practice to double check that all of them are stitching out correctly. So I picked this design. It is in your brother machine. It's one of the ones that comes with it. Um, and I am going to make sure it's the correct size and in the next section, you can actually change the colors to match the colors that I have. So I made it do a rainbow. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, first stitch on the, on the machine. I did hoop up just a little bit of tan fabric with some stabilizer behind it. And I'm going to undo that knob right there and make this a little bit smaller so that I can actually slide this guy into place. So I just want to show you what the editing process looks like. As soon as I put my hoop in the machine, it did move the space down of where it was printing. So it made it smaller. Um, but also you have the size ability so you can make it smaller depending on what you want to do. This one's going to be one inch by three, um, 3.4 inches. And then once I like everything, I'm gonna hit edit end. So I'm done editing. But now this is where I was telling you where you can swap out colors. So I swapped out all these colors based off the colors that are already in my machine. So you can see I just swapped it. And all you have to do is click whatever one it is and hit number five and it'll change the colors for you. So I have Pace Setter Pro. Um, embroidery thread but it also has a bunch of other embroidery thread that you can pick from so now that that is accomplished i can do the normal where it runs around and i double check that it's good to go so i'll click that and we'll see all right so it's back at the center so i'm gonna hit embroider and I'm going to move this over. And you can also change the speed. So one of the things that's cool is you can change the speed right here. I'm not gonna touch anything for this first one. I'm just gonna watch it do its thing. So let's, let's make it happen. Look at that. That is so cool. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like and subscribe. Let me know what you think down in the comments and happy making. <laughs>